I'm Mark Weibrow and this is the Electronic Cafe, the channel for the lovers of electronic music. Hello and I'm Andy McNabb, so let's get started. So welcome to another episode of the Electronic Cafe. Before we dive into the incredible uh, world of John Fox, I just want to give you a few updates. Um, you might have heard from our friend Vaughan George that Mark and I made an appearance in the, the video for his new single called The Bottle. So Mark and I had a great time. The film crew, uh, Master Spence and Simon, Mr. Brian Griffin himself, which is great. Um, hopefully the video will be out by the time this thing's live. So if it is, I'll ask Mark to put a link so you guys can all watch it. Great fun, Vaughn, thank you mate, thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks for having both Mark and I there. Um, and also on October the 9th, if again, we're in time with this getting out, um, you guys need to get yourselves down to the live lounge at the Pizza Express in Holborn where me and my buddy are hosting an evening with Rusty Egan. Um, love to see some of you down there, say hi, uh, be good to meet you. So yeah, see if you can get yourself down to um, the Pizza Express in Holborn. Uh, on October Saturday the night, it kicks off about seven o'clock. So yeah, it'd be great to see you there. Um, there is still the opportunity to win a signed album of Jennifer Touch, uh, one of our favorite artists um, that we loved her album that was out last year. So if you want to enter, um, we'll be drawing that out soon and announce the winner, but you've still got time. So you go into the Jennifer Touch edition and you enter Electronic Cafe Jennifer Touch competition in the comment section. Then Mark and I will write all the names down, put on a bit of paper, Roll them up, pull one out of a hat, and uh, one of you lucky people will have a great vinyl copy of her album. Um, for those who have not seen this show before and you're liking it or you do like it, please subscribe. That'd be amazing. Just push the subscribe button below. We're also now on Instagram, Twitter, and on our fantastic Facebook community where like-minded people like Mark and I talk about great music constantly. So that's the update from me. Let's go and look at the incredible talent and the legend that is... Mr. John Fox. So, John Fox, what an icon, what a legend, um, incredible guy, charisma, aura, incredible songwriter, and a hell of a lot more. Um, so his real name is Dennis Lee. He's not only an incredible singer, musician, but he's also been an artist, a photographer, he's a graphic designer, writer, teacher, and lecturer. So a man of many, many talents. As I said, he was obviously the original lead singer of Ultravox and he, before he went to um, you know, go on to an amazing solo career. Um, obviously incredibly associated with electronic music. Um, and Mark's going to talk a bit more about the, the groundbreaking album, Metamatic, um, which was just, when I first heard it, my jaw just dropped and thought, wow, I'm loving this. Um, but he's also pursued a parallel career in graphic design and education. Obviously, you probably know the story that Ultravox was dropped by the record label at the beginning of 17, 1979 and the band sort of self-financed a tour of the US um, in February. And, and, and it's there where they performed three new songs, which was um, Touch and Go, He's a Liquid, um, which Fox obviously recorded for Metamatic um, and Radio Beach. Um, obviously Fox left the band at the end of the tour and returned to start his solo career and as you all know was replaced by the uh, 
very enigmatic milieu. So Fox signed to Virgin. Um, he had some minor success. Again, it, it, you know, maybe I was living in this bubble back then, but you know, Underpass was his first solo single that went to 31. No one driving, so he was already looking and talk, full, full telling the future of driverless cars way back then, and it got to number 32. So, you know, in my mind, they had charted much higher because they were such big songs in my childhood, you know, real sit up and listen and holy shit, I'm loving this kind of tracks. Um, the album Metamatic was released on the 17th of January, um, and I'm not going to say any more on that because my buddy will not be very happy because he got the long straw and said he's going to talk about Metamatic. So, Mark, <laughs> over to you, my friend. Metamatic is the debut solo album by John Fox released in 1980. As Andy said, it was his first solo project following the acrimonious split with Ultravox Mark I the previous year. It is a departure from the mix of synthesizers and conventional rock instruments on the Ultravox work. Metamatic was purely electronic in sound, and Fox cultivates a curious air of disinterest that never seems truly bored, but more extreme than his distant vocal style in Ultravox. Every fan of electronic music must own a copy of this album in their record collection. Unbelievably, Metamatic was recorded as a small 8-track recording studio in London, produced by Fox and engineered by the great Gareth Jones. Fox's electronic equipment used was limited, but included an ARP Odyssey, an Elka string machine and a Roland CR78 drum machine. Nonetheless, it still holds up as one of the peaks of the early 80s fascination with emotionless, craftwork-inspired synth-pop. Fox had performed He's a Liquid and Touch and Go live with Ultravox before leaving the band in 1979, but Ultravox are not credited for them on Metamatic. On the flip side of that, when Ultravox adapted the tune Touch and Go to make it Mr X on the 1980 Vienna album, Fox wasn't credited either. However, all parties have said they can't really remember who contributed what at the time, so they all just moved on. generally well received by critics and is still cited as possibly his most influential solo release. Metamatic contains some iconic tunes, Plaza, No One Driving, Touch and Go and of course Underpass. 1980 was a very competitive year for electronic synth albums. Along with the release of Metamatic, 1980 saw the release of the debut Visage album, Ultravox Vienna, Gary Newman Telecon, OMD by OMD, Organisation by OMD and the Human League Travelogue. So Metamatic is not alone in its cold, sterile, dystopian, minimalist electronic sound and although not considered to be the biggest album commercially, it is certainly up there critically. The follow-up album, The Garden, released a year later, which Andy will talk about separately, included a number of musicians, but Metamatic was pretty much just John Fox. If you don't know this album, or you just know a few songs from this album, do go check it out. I'm confident that you won't be disappointed. This is a seminal electronic album and everybody should hear it or own it. As a footnote, it was John Fox who persuaded Gareth Jones to work with Depeche Mode. Gareth Jones at the time really didn't want to after hearing Speak and Spell and a Broken Frame. As we know, Gareth Jones went on to produce the trio of Depeche Mode albums, Construction Time Again, some great reward and of course the mighty black celebration contributing to the change of sound and direction and the rest as they say is history metamatic enjoy Yeah. 
watching you glow Letting her receive uh, Nobody I know So Straight after Metamatic in 1981, Mr. Fox released his second album, The Garden. I would say it was a complete change from the first album that he did as a solo artist, and much more like Systems of Romance, which was his last album under the Ultravox guys. There's a lot of sound and subject matter of The Garden that's, in, I think, influenced by a number of factors, like his Catholic upbringing. The early exposure to the Latin mass, Gregorian chants, he did a lot of exploration of England's sort of architecture and history after the release of Metamatic. Um, and there's a song on the album called Systems of Romance, which obviously had been probably written for the um, sessions for the last Ultravox album of the same name, but it wasn't used. Um, there's another similarity in terms of the connection with Systems of Romance in the garden that um, he used um, Robin Simon on the guitar on guitars for this Um because that had been a significant influence on the Systems Romance album and a lot more real kind of musicians he had, uh, electric and acoustic guitars, electric bass, uh, acoustic percussion in addition to synths and drum machines. So it was a lot warmer, um, I say, than that kind of cold, stark, very synth, drum machine-driven, metamatic sound. Um, the, the reason Fox thought that the title The Garden was so right for his album, he, he did a lot of travelling around the UK, apparently on some interview in a radio show in Australia, and he, he, he said he found lots of gardens that were overgrown, ruined, a lot of very grand buildings that were almost decaying, but in his vision he found them more beautiful than when they were in their original state. There's a great opening track, um, Europe After the Rain, I think that really encapsulates the start of the album as a whole because it's got very discreet synths with concert piano, acoustic guitar, a digital drum machine. Um, and, and, and there's also um, like some of the lyrics, like some of the many lyrics on the album that alluded to The Quiet Man, which is like a, an alternative persona Fox had developed prior to Ultravox's Systems of Romance. And it's inspired one of that album's key songs, The Quiet Man. Um, I, I think he saw The Quiet Man as a kind of epitome of detachment and observation um, and claimed to often write from that perspective. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's the last track, I think, uh, just for a moment, really bore resemblance to some of the music on um, Systems of Romance. So there's a definite more of a connection where Metamatic sat on sort of between these two um, bookends of music. Um, but yeah, definitely an album worth checking out. It still sounds really good. You know, it's dated really well. So yeah, check it out. I say this is The Garden, second album by the incredible John Fox. So there's a couple of things I just want to say about John Fox before we kind of wrap that up for the first two albums. There are other notable things that he's done. He's performed with a variety of artists, 
most notably Louis Gordon, but also with Harold Budd, Jory Hukkonen, Robin Guthrie, formerly obviously of the Cocteau Twins, Ruben Garcia and the Belbury Circle. And of course, he's been working with the fabulous Benj under uh, the guise of John Fox and the Mass and again producing some great tracks. And of course, even up till now, so some 40 years later, um, you may remember that last year, this little baby came out, which was How by John Fox and the Mass. My number two album in our top 30 of 2020. So the guy is still knocking it out of the park. And this is still, for me, one of his greatest pipe pieces of work. So check this album out as well. Go through the back catalogue. You'll find some incredible albums uh, like Interplay. There's one that he did that I've got here actually. With um, This is the one he did with Robin Guthrie, which is Mirrorball. All good stuff. So, you know, Mr. Fox, thank you for the amazing uh, music, my friend. You're an absolute legend. And you certainly sit at the top of the table in terms of electronic pioneers. Um, so just want to say thank you for the incredible music. So welcome to another Hot Stuff edition of Electronic Cafe. This is the part of the show where Mark and I get to talk about some really cool new releases that we're absolutely loving right now and that your ears thoroughly deserve and you should be spinning on your turntable. The first album I want to talk to you guys about is by the very talented Art School Girlfriend and the album's called Is It Like Where You Are? Now, this is a very immersive 43 minutes. I... I, I you know, it's this album's doused in heartbreak. So, but don't let that put you off. There's there's ten, ten tracks. Her real name's Polly Mackey. She's got a very haunting vocal, and it sounds like she's grieving an ex partner and just feeling so empty and alone in the sort of midst of a breakup. And 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 all the while, she's wondering if her ex feels the same as she does. Hence the question: Is it like where you are? Polly's um, kind of massively influenced through ninety shoegaze. A new wave, uh, but that really cuts through the sort of um, the influences really cut through that cacophonous, very sonic soundscapes that are on this album with razor sharp precision. Um, and she's progressing through the motions of heartbreak across the album, but you also see a time with the feelings of becoming almost infatuated with someone who sold them an idea which was never really there. Um, there's a closer called Eyes On You with its lamenting vocals that really caps this album off brilliantly. Um, there, there's a perfect sort of newfound clarity in this album. It's, I say, very atmospheric, vocally haunting, but but still warm. Um, I'm going to say, Miss Mackey, you've done a great job here. You really have. Um, if you guys haven't checked it out, please do. Um, I thoroughly recommend this and say it's by Art School Girlfriend. And it's called Is It Light Where You Are? First Hot Stuff album choice is Love Made Me Do It by Kat Von D, released earlier this year. Okay, first off, I ask you to leave behind any bios and move it to one side, as Kat Von D is a multitasking artist, and even before her career as a tattoo artist, her beauty empire, her best-selling books, Kat Von D was classically trained, and it was music that underscored her life. Before this album, she studied piano and voice six days a week to strengthen her songwriting capabilities and her vocals. And with the help of industry heavyweights like Linda Perry, Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters, Pete Murphy from Bauhaus, Dave Cytek, and co-written with Danny Lona from Nine Inch Nails, she has produced a dark electronic synth pop album. An album full of shape-shifting 80s analog synths, post-punk dreamscapes a gothic old school analog synth sounding record. The album starts emotionally with a ballad, which in itself to start a solo album with a ballad takes a lot of self-confidence and courage, as these songs tend to be placed at the end of a record, but she pulls it off. 
The production, the mixing, the mastering on this record is all top notch. I'm not usually a fan myself of these kind of things, but having heard three or four songs before its release, I thought I would check out the album, and I certainly wasn't disappointed. Overall, this is a great album for those who like that dark electronic techno sound, and as a debut, it is very well done and it's been done with authenticity, and I guess there is a path from tattoo needles to turntable needles. Check it out, I feel you won't be disappointed either. So, my second Hot Stuff recommendation. Oh, you're gonna like this. This is um, a band called New Men, N-E-W-M-E-N. The album's called Future 2. I have to start by thanking our good friend and absolute legend, Rusty Egan. So, Rusty introduced me to Jörg Schmidt. Hey, Jörg. Uh, a member of the band who wrote to Rusty saying that I really like you to check this album out, see if you like it. Rusty kindly said, yeah, I love it, but you also need to tell my good friends at the Electronic Cafe. Uh, and I'm glad he did. As I'll tell you from the off, this is a sensational piece of work. The band lineup when they're playing live is Simon Rawland on drums, Joel Amelot on vocals guitar, Jörg himself is on guitar, synths and vocals. There's a guy called Martin Heyman, a synth, and Tim Croner on bass guitar synthesizer. Now, <laughs> In the studio, apparently, this is from Jörg, everyone just plays stuff in the, in the studio. He doesn't even know who plays which instrument. The only person who knows exactly what they're playing and only plays this, the one thing is Simon on the drums. Um, but but where, where do I start with this nine track gem? <sighs> You'll hear influences like craft work, talking heads, public service broadcast, LCD sound system on a bigger slash, Tulu Reed on a track called Cell. Um, but that in no way makes them sound less original as their colourful sonic palette is all their own. Um, and it sparkles like you wouldn't believe. The atmospherics, the highs, the lows are perfectly blended across but the whole piece. At times it's so perfect, you know from the first listen you won't wait that long to play it again. Or as an old friend likes to say with cassettes, rewind and play. This really is sonic art at its finest. Um, you can get this like I did, you know, you can get this available on vinyl, um, I think from H H V in Germany. Well, well worth buying. A genuine contender for our best of 2021 chart, which is obviously coming in a few months. Buy this now. Your ears deserve this. Five stars from me, Rusty. Thank you, mate the intro um, I really hope these guys get to play in the UK because if they do I'm front of the queue um, really like these guys check them out so this is uh, the band called New Men and the album is called Future 2 second hot stuff album choice is Cupid and Psych 85 by Scritti Politti. Originally released in 1985, but remastered and re-released in 2021. From his bedsit in London to New York recording studios, acclaim and mainstream adulation, this is the second album released by Scritti Politti, and it remains the band's most successful album, reaching number five in the UK. The album contained five singles, three of which were top 20 hits in the UK, The Word Girl, Absolute, Perfect Way, Would Bees Pray Like Aretha Franklin, Hypnotize, with the single Perfect Way also becoming a surprise hit in the US, reaching number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100. 
The main man, Green Gartside, somehow found the missing formula and married his preoccupation with language, politics and philosophical writings with the perfect commercial electronic pop synth sheen. And in doing so, Green Gartside created one of the top five or so electro pop releases of the mid 80s, up there more or less with contemporary releases by the likes of New Order, Pet Shop Boys, The Blue Nile, China Crisis, Heaven 17 and Depeche Mode. This album contains an immaculately constructed set of catchy synth pop songs which due to the state of the art recording practices, the advanced use of sequencing and sampling and the use of fair lights they were never able to play live at the time. It's clear that back in the day a lot of effort was put into this album, full of big ambitions making, it, making the enigmatic Green Gart side a superstar. A big time producer, big time studios and some stellar session players bring these great synth funk pop songs to life, all with Gart Side's fragile, charming vocals. If you're a Scritty Plitty fan, you will already know about this album. If you're not a Scritty Plitty fan, you need to give it a listen. Listen to the pop perfection of the singles Wood Bees or Absolute and you'll know exactly what I mean. Scritty Plitty only did three more albums after this one. Me and Andy saw Green Gart Side play an intimate show in the summer just about three or four songs and we have tickets to go and see a full Scritty Politi gig in a few weeks time so fingers crossed that that happens. As I say, check it out. It was groundbreaking at the time and it still sounds pretty good today. So that's it for another uh, edition of the Electronic Cafe. Hope you liked Mark and I's look at the early part of John Fox's career and really like the hot stuff music that we recommended. Let us know. We just want to know if we're hitting the right spot for you guys sonically um, to help you discover new music. Um, if you've got friends that love music as much as you do, please tell them about our show. We really want to keep trying to grow our audience and just get this out to like-minded lovers of music like you are. So uh, as I say, but. Thank you for all your support. Really look forward to seeing our next edition. We've got some very cool stuff coming up soon. We have an interview coming with the magnificent Phono Head. Uh, can't wait to show you that. Um, we've got another competition lined up. And of course, we're coming towards the end of the year where we'll be looking at who are the best albums or who delivered the best albums, sorry, for 2021 and our top 30 show. So, yeah, lots of really cool stuff coming and we're looking at other things that just say, keep making the show bigger and better for your ears. Take care, stay safe, see you soon and I look forward to meeting you all again on the next edition of the Electronic Cafe. Bye-bye. Stay safe, take care and thanks for watching the Electronic Cafe. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.